Hey folks, this is Simplex X, and I'm actually just here giving you a video tutorial on how to load user skins. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly at a very high level, and then I'm going to plan on going into a little bit more detail. So today I want to uh, change the skin on my MiG-15, beautiful plane as it is with the North Korean uh, roundels, um, but uh, we uh, have lots of choices here, so I want to go ahead and do it. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, open up a browser and go to live.warthunder.com. So this is a little bit different from uh, warthunder.com or www.warthunder.com. You'll see that all um, as you load it up, there's lots of new content of all different styles of things. So there's images, videos, uh, conversations, and um, all of these are available for download. But if we want to specifically put on new skins, we go to camouflages. I'm not even sure camouflages is a word, but that's what we're going with. Okay, so in here you'll see, and this is sorted currently in order of latest uh, posted, uh, all the different camouflages that are available. Um, Bo and ABC, man, he just puts out tons and tons of camo. Great, great artist. Okay, so um, if you're new to skins and you don't really know where to look, uh, one of the things that you can do, a little trick, is just sort by downloads, and you'll see what was most popular with all the folks on War Thunder. These have thousands of downloads, which is pretty impressive. Um, this uh, Eric Hartman G6 is one of the most popular skins out there. Um, lots of really, really good high quality skins here that you can see as you go through the list. So the other thing is um, if you come up here and you type in what it is you're looking for, so let's say we want to go find a MiG today. And <clears throat> you'll notice that search really doesn't do much. Um, if you search for MiG, it uh, doesn't really return any good content. So, um, one of the things that artists have done to get around this is they put hashtags in the short description uh, with some sort of indicator. And these actually do function, which is really nice. So the, the good artists uh, will use these. So for example, if you wanted to find a bear cat, um, uh, then the artist has pound bear cat in their description you'll see that when you click on that you get all the bear cats that every artist that has bothered to put that in the short description there's plenty of other ones out there but every artist that has put it in the short description you'll see we now are able to see them the trick is is the URL up on top and if we remove that you can see this is the URL um, just click on any token to bring this up the percent 23 is a space so you need that in there, and then you can t type in whatever your um, whatever your search is. So today I'll, I want to look for MiG-15s, so I'll do this, and you can see there's a bunch of MiG-15s in here, uh, including a lot from Simplex X. That guy seems to be very um, obsessed with MiG-15s, and there's that one from Bowen we just saw it just get posted. Also. Uh, recently been obsessed with MiG-15s and does a great job with them. Okay, so uh, one of the popular MiG-15s is the Black Diamond um, uh, American-based jet team and it's a uh, cool looking slick design and also has a uh, full camo on top and bottom so uh, I actually really like this too. So when you look at the uh, descriptions, uh, some of these uh, skins have lots of details. You can see this one in particular uh, has all the files necessary for every type of MiG. The MiG BIS, the MiG-23, and the German BIS, which is great uh, if you take the time to uh, modify the skin in such a way you can actually use it or apply it across all the MiGs. And, and many of the different skins do that. So, let's go back up to the top here and click download. And while that's downloading, You'll see that that's going to go download to a zip file. Uh, you can see here's all the hashtags that we put in for this one um, to help people find it. And uh, one other thing is uh, some of the skins will have really good detailed installation instructions. This one has pretty good instructions on it, uh, so that's nice. Um, all right, so we've downloaded the zip file, and I'll bring it right on, and this will show you 
all the files associated with this skin in this particular zip file. Um, these are the four primary skin files that are necessary. Sometimes they will or won't have these in files, which are the spectral maps. I mean, you always have to have the primary and the damage file, uh, unless your artist has just left the damage file out. And then you usually have one BLK for each type of plane. In this case, you'll see that there's these little BLK extensions. These BLKs are actually included for all three types of MIGs, so you can actually copy these into any of the MIG directories and it'll immediately recognize which BLK is the one that it cares about and you'll be able to have access to that. So I'll show you how that works in a second too. But let's put this off to the side for a sec. Alright, now we want to open up our file explorer. Oh, actually before you do that, let's go back into War Thunder. So, uh, sorry about the low resolution, I just want this to be able to work very quickly and perform well. So, here's our default skin and we're going to use the BIS today and we're going to go to um, to be able to apply a skin you want to go to customization it's this little paintbrush right here so click on that and you'll see this user skin section this didn't used to be there before 13.9 or whatever it was um, and you'll notice that it's disabled and there's nothing there so we're going to click this wand and you can see it says create a user skin sample file in the game folder and that's exactly what it's going to do so it creates a template uh, underscore mig15 folder and puts the user skin in that so there we go uh, there's our skin it rubs the lotion on the skin and you'll see it's the same skin, so it, nothing's changed, but we're actually using our, our new skin that's been created. So let's go find that user folder directory. It doesn't really tell you where it is and it doesn't give you an option to open it. So go to your file folder and we'll bring that in here. And in this case, it's on my C drive. Now, if you have um, Steam, it may put it in a Steam directory for you, but uh, if not, it should be in the program file directory. And uh, than under War Thunder. So you'll have to find that if it's not in there, but this is the most common place for it on a PC. Um, C colon backslash uh, programs file War Thunder, and then you'll see this new user skin directory. And, and it actually created a subdirectory in here called template MIG15. Remember we saw that? And inside of here is your user skin. So these are the same files. I'm really quickly going to go through these. So uh, these A files that you see here is your primary skin, the one with the DMG is your damage skin. I'm going to open that while that's loading. I'll go ahead and open this. And while that's loading, I'm going to open this. And we'll talk about the the BLK file in a second. Okay, so here was that uh, A file that we were talking about. There's your MIG-15 as it stands. And then this is the DMG file, so you can see all the damage that's in there, all the transparencies and the bullets. And then as each part of your plane gets damaged, these areas will pop up and replace the standard skin. And these other two files in here are the underscore in files. There's one for the damage and there's one for not. And you can see there's actually a bug in here. It didn't create a damage one. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the files are buggy. Uh, and uh, Gajan's, uh, I'm assuming, working on that. But this is called a spectral map. And the spectral map is basically how shiny or how flat an area is. You can see these bright spots uh, where it's yellow is very, very shiny. Um, as it gets more muted and turns to green and then a darker green, it gets more and more flat. Um, one of the things you'll notice is if, you, if the artist doesn't replace the spectral map also, um, you'll see where these roundels are here on the wings of the original plane these spots will show up as flat even if they haven't put roundels on uh, on their MIG. So uh, also in the original BIS it's all red up here and here and these will show up really dark and flat whereas the rest of the plane will be shiny uh, even if the artist is colored in the area. So getting the spectral maps from the artist is great even if they just give you um, very plain generic ones. Okay and then in addition to the those four files, so the two spectral map files and the two um, uh, content files, there's this mig15.blk. Um, I'm going to put that off to the side for a second and show people how to actually load the skin uh, because they may not care about this, um, but uh, I will show before the end of the video exactly how a BLK works. So the very first thing I want to do is create a folder in here and I'm going to call it black diamond 
mig17. Okay. The reason we put a folder in here is because these file names are all going to be the same for every skin, every custom skin that we bring in. And if we don't put a folders to start organizing them, they'll overwrite each other and you won't be able to use. But if you put a folder in here, uh, it, it, it'll it act the same whether it's in a folder or not in a folder. You could have it three or four folders deep. It'll still find the files and it'll look the same over here. So let's go ahead and put one in. And then I'm going to go back to that zip file that we just downloaded. So this, remember, this is the one that we downloaded off of live.warthunder.com with all these files in it. And I'm going to copy these over. Now you'll see I have the same four files here. Uh, but in this case, this is the primary skin file. And this is the damage skin file. So you can see all the damage coming through. And then this is uh, the spectral maps. And I flattened them out so that it doesn't have weird artifacts from the original skins, but it'll still give a nice kind of shiny coat. Uh, makes it look like a very polished plastic. Okay, and then I have three BLK files instead of just the one. And the reason is, is because each of these BLK files are for the different types of MiG-15s. So these two are for the regular MiG, Russian Soviet MiG, and the regular Soviet MiG BIS. And then this is for the German MiG BIS. Okay, so we've copied the files in here, user skin, template, MiG-15, and then Black Diamond directory. And let's go back to War Thunder and see what we have. So we're going to go ahead um, and refresh. This is a little refresh button. So go ahead and do that. And then see what other options we have. Now we have the original MiG-15 skins that are still there. And now we have the Black Diamond skin. And there it goes. It's on. So that's it. You can go for a test flight. And we'll do that a little bit later in the video and show you that it's on there. But you can see 360 degrees. Uh, the skin file is on there and uh, looks great. OK. So let's go back to that. That's it for everybody that's uh, just looking to get the skin on there. You've got it on there. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the BLK file, and then I'm going to leave people alone. The only reason you need to know about the BLK file is sometimes they're buggy and sometimes they don't have the right information. OK, so the BLK file has two points of uh, reference. This is inside the binary files, uh, and you can find the reference inside of the uh, War Thunder uh, software development kit, but basically they have the reference to the name of the plane and the particular layer, whether it's the damage layer or the empty layer. And then this right here is we're saying for this particular layer, we want to use this particular file. Okay, so these are TGAs. I haven't upgraded them to D, uh, DDS yet, so I'll have to do that. But in the meantime, so these. Uh, um, the, these are the names inside of the binary, and these are the files that it's going to be referencing instead of the default content inside of the binaries from now on. So, there you go. That's what the BLK files do, and you'll see the different BLK files have different content inside of them. For example, if I went over to the German one, the file names are going to be the same. Well, that's interesting. I do have DDS in there. The file names are going to be the same, but the... Um, the reference points or not. So yeah, I've just found a bug in my own BLK files. I'll have to update that one and send it. Okay, so that's... Oh, I'm sorry, I opened the original. That's what it is. Okay, so you'll see the originals were TGA files. I actually converted them to DDS files and higher resolution. And um, anyway, so each of the different planes has a different reference point but uses the same file names. Okay, so now the last thing I want to show you is that you can actually use this on the different planes. So let's go ahead and come back in here. We're going to go back and we're going to go to the German MIG, for example. And uh, let's see if we can look at our aviation tree. And we'll go down here to our German MIG. And the same thing, the customization, the little paintbrush up here. We'll click on that. And there's our German MIG. That's the default German skin, a little boring. Right, so we're going to go um, over here add to the user skin. You can see there's nothing in there. That's actually it's uh, able to see the the uh, BLK from the other file, which is kind of interesting. Also, a little bit of a bug there. But we're going to go ahead and create a custom directory, and then um, let's go back to the War Thunder skins directory. So I'm going to bring this file folder back in here. So uh, C colon 
program files x86, War Thunders, user skin, and now we have the German directory in here. So we'll go ahead and open that up and you'll see all of the German files. So let's go back to this black diamond directory that we created and we'll just copy it, go to user skins, go into German, and we'll paste it in here. All right, so now that's been pasted in there and we'll come back in here we'll do a refresh and we'll con we can see that even though this other one showed up the what's really important is that we have this German black diamond one okay this is the German files that it just created that are just the blank skin that's the same skin see and then this is the German black diamond one and we know that that one's gonna work because the artist has has put the right content in the right uh, files in the right place. And there you go. So now the German Big Biss also has the skin on it, and you can do this with any of the skins. Alright, I think that's uh, all I wanted to show you for this particular video. I hope that was helpful, and uh, please remember to uh, like my videos and like any skins that you download. Um, helps me keep getting excited about doing this, and, um, and uh, yeah, really appreciate it. I get very excited about jumping online and seeing uh, that people do appreciate the work or give me good feedback on it. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.